Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program, and I want to try making a rocket using only Mammoth engines to get to pole and back. Now, these engines are really heavy and awkward, so it's going to be a little cumbersome trying to make a lander, but let's get right into it. Just starting out in the sandbox, first thing I do here is put down a crew capsule, and after that, I want to put down an engine. And you can just see the size difference between these, and it's a little ridiculous. So I put down a small fuel tank and a parachute just for fun, and I wanted to see what this would do. Now, I don't know what I was expecting here, but it just took off so so fast and then ran out of fuel immediately. So to hopefully solve both of those problems, I'm adding on some extra fuel tanks like this and you can see now I got somewhat of a slope going down. I replaced that top adapter to make it a little more gradual and you can see here it just rockets off the launch pad again. Now after I limit the throttle a bit, it becomes a little bit more normal and actually has a pretty good amount of fuel. It's not enough to just immediately get into orbit, but it's honestly not half bad and I figure for just being a pole lander, it should be pretty good. Now I added on a docking port here so that, you know, I could dock and after that I wanted to add on a decoupler in the bottom, but you can't attach anything to the bottom of the mammoth engines, so to get around that, what I want to do is add on some radial decouplers to the sides like this. Now I ended up putting some medium-sized fuel tanks on the sides of these, and the plan for this stage is to be the orbiter so that once my lander comes back up, it'll redock with this and get down to the ground. And you can see here, I was messing around with adding some fuel tanks in the middle too, maybe it's a separate stage or something, but it just looked weird and I didn't really like it. So I ended up deleting those, and I put a large fuel tank, and I liked the look, but it was sort of clipping into a lot of the tanks. So what I ultimately decided on was using this cone shape that comes down and sort of fills in the middle. And after that, I put down the engines, but they're actually a little too small for the big tanks, which doesn't really matter, but just to make it look a little bit better, filled it in with the frustum. Once I did that, put down the engine again and put it on the launch pad. Now, launching it didn't really go so well because it wasn't even able to lift itself. So to give it a little bit more thrust, I added on a bicoupler like this, and once I did that, I used the move tool to offset it a little bit so I could add a second one in place as well. And you can see here, I ended up doubling my engines. And with just these two stages, I actually was able to get a decent orbit here. Now, I'm not planning to use these stages around Kerbin, but it's just good to see that they definitely have the power and probably the fuel I'm gonna need to get back. Now, as a final touch here, I added on some docking ports in the middle, and I'm gonna use some RCS thrusters, which I'm putting in now, to push these two tanks together once the lander goes away. And once that happens, they become just one object. It's just a little bit easier to manage in orbit when that's the case, and considering they're already going to be right next to each other, it should be easy enough to put them right next to each other. Now, while I was talking about that, I also added in some boosters as well, and these are literally just a nose cone, a tank, and the mammoth engine. And you can see now getting on the launch pad, two of them are behaving well, and two of them are doing this, and trying to take off probably wasn't the play here. So I went back into the editor and you can see I added on some extra struts, also turned on auto strut. And once I had that done, you can see it actually sort of holding together now. And I went for a launch. Now taking off, it was really stable and it was working a lot better than before. And in fact, just as a test and partially because I kind of got distracted, I flew all the way out to Eve with this. Now I had like no fuel, so I wasn't gonna be able to get home or anything. But again, it was just good to see that it had the fuel to do this. And also it was kind of fun to see it explode in the atmosphere like this. So after that very scientific test, I added on some extra boosters like this, and what I wanted to do was add on one extra stage in between a couple of my other stages. Now you can see here, I put down some mammoth engines sort of in the middle of the rocket, and what I wanted to do is put a stage underneath this stage. Now again, you can attach directly to the bottom of these engines, but you can sort of get around that by using a lot of structural pieces like this, and then connecting to the bottom of these structural pieces. And you can see here, the look's actually pretty close, but I knew I was going to need a lot of struts to make this work, because it's really unstable at the moment. So if you're putting all those in place, I added on a bunch of extra boosters since I just added on a bunch of extra weight, and with all that added on, I was finally ready to launch. Now getting off the launch pad was a little slow, but it wasn't too bad, and you can see here I ended up getting high enough that it was time to drop the first set of boosters. This worked almost perfectly, so you just fly away like nothing, and honestly, that couldn't have gone better. Now after a little bit more time, you can see all of my ring of boosters ended up deploying wrong, and this is where things went very wrong. The boosters seemed to just fly straight into these rockets and cause some problems, but I decided to at least use this as a staging test, so you can see here, next stage launch just fine, and after that, I was gonna launch the top stage, but I forgot to turn off the boosters first, so they ended up just running right into the rocket, but it seemed to decouple just fine, so it's really just that one stage with a ring of boosters that's the problem. Now, once again here, I ran out of fuel, and you can see a bunch of explosions and stuff, and, you know, this really isn't ideal, but at least it kind of worked, but things started to look even worse, because I really only had about 11,000 meters per second to Delta V, and to get all the way to pole, it was gonna take probably about 11 or 12 if I was really trying and doing it well, so I tried adding on some extra boosters and adding on some extra tanks, but at times this even seemed to just reverse my progress. And this design had so many moving parts, it fell off the launch pad a lot of the time, things just seemed to randomly fall apart sometimes, and with all that, I just eventually decided to get rid of the bottom
bottom two stages and start over again. But this time I had a little bit of a better idea. Instead of just randomly putting a ring of boosters around, I wanted to put them closer to the bottom, but you'll see something else I have in mind here. Now I'm just building up some basic boosters like this, you see, nose cone, the fuel tanks, and the engines. But after I had those, I actually decided to stack these on each other like this, and I figured this would probably go better. Instead of having the boosters falling from all sides of the rocket, they're just falling off two sides, and this makes it a little bit easier on the rocket. Now I didn't brace them so well again, so they just sort of did this. But after bracing them up a little bit here, I actually decided to triple the amount I had, and I just did that by putting two on the sides of these boosters. Now this should allow it to fall off quite easily, but still give me a ton of power. And you can see here I have about 12 and a half meters per second of delta V, which should be pretty good. So I added on a couple of extra boosters on the sides, and with all that done, I waited for a launch window to get to Jewel, and I'm finally here going for the mission. Now taking off was a little bit better than before, got a decent amount of speed, wish it was a little bit better, but it does the trick. And you can see here I'm actually turning 90 degrees. This is partly my fault, I should have just done this in the editor, and the reason for it is that as I start to turn here, I don't want the booster to be on top of me, because otherwise it's going to come down and hit me as it falls off. And you can see these boosters on the sides fell off, and at first I thought it was just fine. There's a few explosions, shouldn't have been too big of a deal though, but I only noticed this in editing. While I was coming into the atmosphere and gave myself a little bit more light, I'm actually missing a booster on the side here, and that's the reason that my rocket keeps turning to the side slightly. I was kind of wondering why that was happening, but ultimately this didn't really end up being that big of a deal anyway, and I just continued to burn. Now, I didn't want to get an orbit around Kerbin or anything, I'd set myself up so that I could just keep burning and I'll get ejected out of Kerbin in the right direction. And finally here, you can see after growing for a little bit, I ended up running out of fuel in the bottom stage, and it was time to deploy it. And I was a little nervous about this, so you can see I actually started out just a little bit of thrust going away from it, but by this point, it seemed to be mostly fine, and I just started to burn. Now, the stage I'm controlling right now only has two engines on it, and it's pretty heavy, so it's kind of annoying to control. And you saw there I set Jules the target, and I'm slowly starting to burn up towards it. Now, I should have set myself up for it to be pretty close, but with a pretty minimal amount of effort, I actually got a reasonable encounter here. Now, it is like 2 billion meters away, but that's not half bad, and I got it down to about a billion just by burning a little bit more. And with all that done, I added on another maneuver, and it's a little bit further in the flight, and with this maneuver is for us to get me all that much closer. Now, I'll end up fine-tuning this once I actually start to burn, but I want to get it about 3 million meters away, and you can see I just got that here. And you can see here, with that all set up, started to warp away from Kerbin and towards that maneuver point, and once I was there, I ended up deploying the solar panels and the antennas, and I needed to deploy the solar panels to be able to rotate myself, but it took an unbelievably long time to turn around to where I needed to be, and you can see finally here when I'm pointing in the right direction, I started to do the burn, and it's about 130 meters per second, which is kind of a lot of fuel, but this burn is going to save me way more than that once I get to Jewel. Now, the reason I want to be as close as possible once I get to Jewel is that you end up burning a lot more efficiently the closer you get to a planet. Now, after a bunch of failed attempts to get really close, I ended up getting into a little over 200,000 meters, and that's good because Jewel's atmosphere extends out to 200,000 meters, so I need to be a little bit above that, and this gives me a little bit of wiggle room in case things go wrong. And you can see here, finally warping all the way over to Jewel, and then finally, Jewel coming in view now, and I'm slowly warping over to the other side. And once I get down to about 240,000 meters, I decide it's good enough, and I start to do the burn, and I just barely let myself get captured here. Now the reason I don't try pulling in the orbit a little bit more is that I want to try getting a gravity assist to do that for me. Ideally, I'd spend a little under 100 meters per second here, and save probably about a thousand. So on the other side of the orbit, I ended up making a maneuver like this, and I played around for quite a while, and finally got an encounter with Lathe. And I actually messed around even more and got a better encounter with Tylo, and Tylo's a little bit more massive, so it can do a little bit more pulling. And you can see here I get a much better result. I actually pull myself almost exactly where I need to be, so I eventually just warp all the way over to the maneuver node, which takes quite a while since the orbit's so large. And once I got in there, I made a very descriptive quick save, which I definitely wasn't going to forget the name of, and once I did that, just started to do my burn. Now it's about 30 meters per second, which is amazing considering it's going to save me so much fuel, but you can see here, slowly start to burn, and I actually get an accidental encounter with Lathe, but just burning a little bit more, I finally get that Tylo encounter, and you see here, pulling it in, I finally get to the spot where I want to be, and after that, I make once again a very descriptive quick save, and I just start to work back into place. Now at this point, there's nothing I really should need to do, so I just sort of sit back and watch the gravity exist take place. Now you see me warping right in front of Tylo, and this makes sense, because as I start to fall towards Tylo, it's going to kill a ton of my orbital speed, and you can see here, once I come out of that orbit, it's much smaller now than it was before. So if I set pole as my target, and after I did that, I made one 
one last correction, and the thing with poles has such a tiny sphere of influence, I really need to get as close as possible, so I'm trying to get the descending node down to zero degrees, and once I have that there, all there's really left to do is make, once again, a very descriptive quick save, and slowly try to get an encounter. Now, eventually here, I got an accidental encounter with Lathe, so I had to be kind of careful here and burn just a little bit to get out of the way of that, and it only cost me about three meters per second, so it wasn't really that expensive, but you see here, I actually got a pretty close encounter, and once I saw that, I started to use a maneuver node to get as close as possible, and finally here, you can see I got an end just to about 250,000 meters. That was pretty much as close as I could get, and with that done, it was time to just wait for that encounter. And you can see now, pull over there after waiting a little bit, and now I'm just flipping around, so I'll be facing roughly the right direction, and I ended up warping, so I'd be right on top of pole. Now, I warped a little too far, actually, and I was slightly past the periapsis, but it was good enough, and I started to do my burn here, and all I want to do is try circularizing. Now, I figured I was going to need to kill pretty much all of my speed, and you can see that I finally ran out of my second stage, so I went into my top stage here, and that's going pretty much as planned, and if anything, it's actually slightly ahead of schedule. I figured I'd pretty much need to use the third stage for the entirety of this burn, and I got a little extra out of that second stage. So you can see here, I finally ended up getting captured, and once that happened, I tried pulling in my orbit, and I wanted the periapsis to be right about at 14,000 meters. That was for no particular reason other than it just sounded pretty good. Now you can see here just how little I turned on my engine and just how much distance I got out of it. I turned up a little bit more at the end here, but I thought it was just kind of crazy how much I got out of that little throttle. So after making that first burn, then one more correction burn here, you can see finally I got an orbit that's right about at 14,000 meters pretty constantly. So now that I'm finally in a stable orbit around pole, what I wanted to do is try separating off my lander and combining the orbiters. And this is where things started to go wrong. You see they immediately started rotating out and they were getting further apart from each other. So what I did is just loaded up my quick save again, and once I did that I had a new strategy. You can see I separated them off and then boosted away way quickly. After that I got out of the way, I went into the tracking station, and I immediately selected one of those orbiters to control. Once I had that I tried boosting them into each other, and this is where things started to go really wrong. In fact all of the footage you've seen before was actually from my second attempt at getting the pole. This was the first attempt, and this is the reason that it didn't work out. I ended up putting RCS thrusters in the wrong spots, partially because I forgot, partially because I ended up moving stuff around, and I couldn't get them to come back together. I'm sure it was possible, but it literally just wasn't worth it, and there's also a few other improvements I figured I could make while I was in the vehicle assembly building. So eventually here you can see I tried moving around with the lander attached to just one of these, but it still wasn't able to get them close together, and I ultimately decided just to try again, but this time put some more boosters on there. So you can see I have four boosters here that should push them closer together, and I also added on a whole bunch of docking ports, and these are for the lander to connect to, and I decided to put a bunch of them just because why not? It seemed like there was no reason not to, and just makes it way easier later. So once I had that going, see I'm back in orbit here, and I'm trying to put them back together, and this time it was actually kind of working. See they're slowly starting to get close together, but eventually I ran out of the RCS fuel in that tank, so I just switched over to the other rocket and start to get closer to it with that one. Now once I did that, I ended up killing a little bit too much speed and stopping, so I had to re-accelerate towards it, and it actually seemed pretty good, but I misaligned the docking ports a little bit, and this first attempt didn't quite get there. So I tried again, but this time I was a little bit slower. I ended up getting those docking ports just close enough that they ended up touching and they ended up sticking together. Now it took quite a while for them to settle in, and you can actually see here I just speeded up a ton. But eventually they did sort of straighten out a bit. It all connected together just fine, and with that I had one orbiter unit, and it was time to go back over to the lander and try to get this on pole. Now I started by expanding everything out now that I don't have the orbiters in the way, and with that done, it was really time to just face retrograde and start to kill a bunch of my speed. Now I only had to use a little bit of throttle since pretty much any change in velocity is going to kill my speed. And after just killing it for a little bit longer, I eventually decided on this trajectory. Now, there really was no reason for me to pick anything specifically, but one thing I definitely should have picked was daytime. So you can see here, I ended up boosting the light, so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on in the video, and I'm slowly just dropping down. This landing is honestly really easy, since the gravity and pole was really small. So you can see here, I just slowly started to get towards the bottom, and eventually here, I settled down. And I don't have any landing gear, because I figured I could just land on the engine, and that sort of was true here. I did end up landing, but the issue was, it was on a slope, so the SAS was actually working overtime right now to keep myself up. So I ended up having to turn that off to slowly fall down, and after balancing it for a little bit, I used a solar panel to burn myself into slamming into the ground. And with that done, I was laying down, but I was still sliding a bit, so I just had to turn myself to increase the friction. And finally here, you can see I stopped myself, and I was technically landed on pole. So of course, I had to take the Kerbal out and plant the flag. So doing that here, and the falling was quite 
slow. So I warped the daytime just to make it a little bit easier to see. And after that, you can see here, plant the flag. And with that done, it's time to get back on the ship and get back home. Now, this is a little harder than expected. I ended up starting out by just retracting everything. And once I did that, I need to somehow get my nose up. And it's a lot easier said than done. Now, I did end up having that happen here, but only after my solar panels flew off. And unfortunately, both of them flew off, which meant that even though I have an orbit here, this is going to be really annoying since I will need the solar panels to generate electricity to run the reaction wheels. So without that, I ended up deciding just to load the save and try again. Now I ended up taking off here, and you can see here I just clipped the light on the terrain, but I didn't really care about the light at this point, so that was totally fine, and as I started to take off here, everything looked great, and I started to extend out the solar panels to get myself some electricity, but I looked at the world map and noticed a major problem. There's just no orbital trajectory at all for me. And that's just really bizarre. It's also considering me landed right now, and I'm not exactly sure how that works. And I can't really rendezvous with the orbiter without having the orbital trajectory. So I ended up trying again, and you can see this time I also slammed the light on the ground, but I figured it was probably just a one-off thing before. This time it really wasn't as good. You can see here I'm sort of getting this weird turn, but as long as I get some sort of orbit, it's fine. And considering it's so easy to get off pole, I wasn't too worried, but the game still wasn't showing me an orbital trajectory. So I ended up restarting the game, and I tried taking off much more carefully. I really tried not to break anything at all since I kind of suspected that to be the problem, and I got a really terrible spin here, but I did end up getting off the ground for just long enough that I was able to start boosting up. And you can see here when I go into the big mode, I do actually have an orbital trajectory, so I suspect that breaking that part on the ground somehow confused the game, and it just thought I was landed. I'm not exactly sure how that happens, but whatever, it worked out now. And the next thing that I had to do was just rendezvous with the orbiter. Now, I wasn't really too concerned about doing things that efficiently since pulls the gravity is just so light that really even the most extreme maneuvers are like maybe 100 meters per second of fuel, so it's just not really that big of a deal. After waiting for quite a while here, you can see I get a really close encounter. It's just under a kilometer. So I just wait until that point, and once I'm there, I can see it way off in the distance. So I just turned the lander towards it, and I just did a slow burn towards it. And after that, you can see here it started to come into view, and it's now much closer. And in fact, here I ended up shimmying around for quite a while. I ended up skipping that since it ended up being really boring. But you can see here, only 15 meters away, and last thing to do is just retract all my solar panels so I'm able to connect to it, and just get near it. Then for quite a few tries, I finally got those docking ports to meet up, and I was slightly turned, and that did cause some problems. Now you can slightly turn these two things relative to each other in the docking port settings, but it still was off by a lot. As I tried to burn just a little bit here, you can see me just wildly turning out of the way. And I tried enabling all the engines at once to see how that would work out, but that just broke the docking port and it just did this. So eventually here, what I realized I could do is just transfer all the fuel into the lander. And if I did that, I'd have about 3000 meters per second of Delta V, which I figured was probably a about enough to get home. So once I transferred all the fuel I could, I ended up undocking here and starting to do my burn. Now what I wanted to do is burn off from pole in a way where I'd kill a little bit of my speed going towards Jewel. And that's a little counterintuitive here because normally I'm trying to get away from Jewel, so I actually want to increase my speed there. But what I want to try to do is get a Tylo encounter and then have Tylo throw me out from Jewel. And I figured doing this would save me 600 meters per second of Delta V. I'm making that number up, but it's probably somewhere around that point. So after waiting for a transfer window here, I ended up playing with the maneuver node a little bit. And eventually here I got a really good boost off a of Tylo, and eventually it tuned it just enough that I got a really, really good launch. So I ended up turning myself so that I'd be able to do that burn, and started to do that here. Now fortunately, since the lander is pretty much just an engine strapped to a fuel tank, it really, really goes, and that entire burn took me almost no time at all. The last segment here, though, I had to be a little delicate with, so I turned down the thrust percentage, and I'm just slightly making that now. So I get around Jewel, and you can see Tylo come into view here, and I'm getting pulled towards it, and it's flinging me out from Jewel's sphere of influence. So with that done, you can see Jewel slowly go out into the distance, and finally here, I'm in interplanetary space. To save you the trouble of watching every single step I did here, I ended up showing the important ones. First one is getting my burns that I just barely touched Kerbin, and you can see that happening here, and we'd be about 50-something million meters away from it. Once I had that, I ended up doing one correction burn to get myself into right about 70,000 meters. Now, the advantage of doing this is the closer you get to a planet, the more efficient your burn is going to be. And I didn't really think this one through fully, I actually did want to be slightly in the atmosphere, and that cost me just a little bit. So, but just warped all the way around to where Kerbin is. And once I thought I was close enough, I started to do my burn, and you can see here I do end up getting captured, but then I run out of fuel. And this is sort of a problem because my periapsis is above 70,000 meters, which means I'm not in the atmosphere and I can't aero break, so I'm going to be eternally stuck up here. So I did this once again, but I actually dipped down so it'd be about 60,000 meters, and this time I'm actually going to have an unstable orbit, so I should be able to just use the very top stage, which is literally just a heat shield on top of that crew capsule, to slowly come down. And finally here you can see I'm slowly starting to fall down, and I'll show you that here as I go through the outro. So guys, thanks for watching. This definitely a super fun video to make, and it took quite a while to get everything together, and 
and big good target to do, build the rocket, and get the multiple attempts done that make it happen. But if you have any other cool video ideas, make sure to leave them down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.